Hey, we're covering seven things that God has to say about the LGBTQ plus community and transgender people through the format of commonly asked questions. We got seven of them. <laughs> Let's get right into the material. All right. So number seven, I feel like I was born in the wrong body. What's the Bible and God has to say about this? The scripture comes from Jeremiah chapter one, verse five. And it says, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou comest forth out of the womb, I sanctify thee and I ordain thee to be a prophet unto the nations. So he is speaking specifically to the prophet Jeremiah, but I did want to highlight that God said in his word that before you were even created, I already knew you, I already predestined you, what body you would be in, what you will look like, every aspect of you. So it's important to know that anyone that says I was born in the wrong body or I feel as if I was a mistake, right, does not know that you were intentionally and divinely made with specificity and with purpose. So the Lord made me a man. He made you a woman or a man. And to be born in the wrong body is just confusion because God is not the author of confusion, but he is the author of truth and he is the author of your life. Everything that's happening in your life, God is sovereign. Um, he sees it. He lives in the future, the present and the past all at the same time. He's all knowing. He knows the ink intricate details of your life. So that's number seven. Number six, I was born this way. So what's the Bible have to say about this? It comes from John chapter three, verse three. And this is Jesus speaking, saying, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So I'm going to humor everybody. We're going to say like, hey, you were born with these desires or you were truly born in the wrong body. All right. We're going to say what the Bible says. And it says that if you want to enter to heaven, if you want to enter into the kingdom of God, you must be born again and you must be become a new creature. So when you're born again, you're actually different and you become the image of Christ Jesus being his follower, being his disciple, being his ambassador and receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Number five, how can you tell me who to love? Love is love. Our scripture comes from Matthew 10, verses 37 to 39. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. So when it comes to love, the Lord says that your highest love is your love for Jesus, your love for him, the father, the son, and the Holy Spirit. Anything that is competing with the love of God is idolatry. You have to cut out your life. It can be career. It can be, uh, be possessions. It can be people. All love must be crucified at the cross of Christ Jesus and us dying daily to ourselves, our own desires, and following after him. Your love for Jesus is the most significant love that you have in your life. Nothing can compare. Nothing can compete. Number four, I think that my life and my lifestyle is natural. So what's the Bible have to say about things being natural or unnatural? This comes from Romans 1 verses 26 through 28. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burning in their own lust one toward another, one with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves the recompense of their, each other was, which was meat. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do things which are not convenient, which are nat natural. So the Bible says for us to be fruitful and to multiply. You don't see anywhere in nature this lifestyle being able to multiply or be able to reproduce naturally without human intervention. Lastly, this is why you see diseases popping up in particular communities such as monkeypox, HIV, and AIDS and spreading out into the greater community because even nature says that this isn't natural. Number three. 
So what am I supposed to do? I'm just supposed to deny who I am. So this comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone be in Christ, he is a new creature. He is a new creation. The old has gone. The new has come. And also Romans 8, 29. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed in the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. So the scripture says that once we are in Christ, who we are has to conform and look like Jesus. And so we no longer are individuals living unto ourselves, but we are in a body of believers and we're in the kingdom of God being kings and priests. And so if you want to know, hey, am I going into heaven? Am I going to enter to the kingdom of God? Just ask the question, do I look like Jesus? And so I need to look like Jesus in my mind, thoughts, heart, behavior, and my action and lifestyle and conform to the image of him in the Bible. Because John 1 and 1 says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God, and the world dwelt among us and became flesh. Who was God and became a human that we may be redeemed from hell, sin, destruction, the works of the devil, depression, sexual immorality, to be delivered and have salvation. This is Jesus Christ. Number two, it's my body. I'll do what I want. My body, my choice. The scripture comes from 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God. Ye are not your own. You are not your own. Your body does not belong to you. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. And in your spirit, which are God's. So anybody that's saying, hey, it's my life. I could do what I want. Does not know the purchase of great price where God humbled himself and put all his power, all his majesty, all his glory into a human body, becoming a baby, growing up and living a sinless and perfect life. And it says the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of salvation is eternal life. So this is why we are saved by grace through faith that no man can boast. We were not perfect. We lived evil lives. We lived in darkness. And it says we were supposed to go to hell. But Jesus, being God, humbling himself and becoming a human, actually had the propitiation or the recompense, the payment for us. It's like, hey, I deserved eternal life, but I'm going to die on the cross for all the world's sins. And so he gave us eternal life and the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is the same resurrection power that we could be born again and how we're going to be raised from the dead in the resurrection that we don't have to see the second death and go to hell like the devil and his angels because hell wasn't made for humans. But people that deny him, deny his salvation, deny his deliverance, deny everything that he did on the cross, they're choosing darkness and judgment instead of eternal life. And number one, um, we're going to get right into the scriptures and then we will address everything. So we're starting with 2 Corinthians 10 verse 3 to 5. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And then 1 Corinthians 1 and 18, for preaching the cross is to them that perish foolishness but unto us which are saved is the power of god so i want to address this we have left preaching the cross we have left prayer and fasting and bible study we have left repentance in the fear of the lord and we wonder why our stuff isn't working you cannot talk someone or debate someone into jesus it does not work Salvation is spiritual and supernatural in its essence. You have to ask the Holy Spirit to do it for you. And you have to ask the Holy Spirit to do it for your friends and family who are LGBTQ plus and who are transgender. 
and you must preach Jesus' death, burial, and his resurrection, for it's the power of God. And lastly, we do not war naturally or carnally because everything is spiritual in essence. And I do want to pour out, (laughs) I do want to point out the correlation between people living in these alternate lifestyles and also absence of fathers in the home and sexual trauma such as rape, molestation, incest, sexual assault, pornography being introduced in childhood and in adolescence. So if you're a Christian or not a Christian, um, the most important thing you have to know is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the light of the world. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Whoever believes in him shall not perish. They shall have eternal life. Jesus has come in the world to destroy the works of the devil, to reveal the Father, and to free the world from sin. He did that by living a perfect life and never sinning. But he was crucified on the cross for our sins and for the sins of the world. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of salvation is eternal life. And he resurrected from the dead on the third day, being both God and the Son of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. And now he is currently seated on the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us and praying for us until his second coming. And he has given us the power to become the children of God by being born again and receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. For all who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So if you have a transgender LGBTQ plus person in your life who is family or friends, or if that's personally you, I just want to end with prayer and also one last scripture. And this comes from the book of John, verse 13 and 35. By this shall men know that ye are my disciples, if ye love one another. So how Christians love um, each other, their brethren, fellow believers, and how Christians love the world and their enemy is how people will see the gospel of Jesus. So have someone that is gay or homosexual or transgendered in your home, in your church, in your fellowship, preach to them the gospel and... If we do it right, the Holy Spirit is going to do all the work. (laughs) Salvation is not by might, um, is by um, your spirit, um, Lord. So I just want to pray and end this off, all right? So, Lord, I just want to thank you for your Holy Spirit. I want to thank you for your death, burial, and resurrection on the cross. For you said the cross is foolishness to those who perish, but it is salvation and power to those who are saved. Lord, we say in the name of Jesus Christ that we don't war with the warfare that is natural or carnal, but we have spiritual power through prayer and fasting and intercession. We're lifting up all our friends and family and anyone that we know that are in a LGBTQ plus homosexual, gay, and transgender lifestyle, that they will be delivered by the blood of Jesus, by the name of Jesus, and by the power of the Holy Spirit and your resurrection, God. We thank you that we are saying that we bind every spirit, we bind every devil, we bind and cast out every unclean spirit of molestation and rape and pornography and incest and sexual assault and trauma and absentee fathers that is in their mind, soul, spirit, and body. And I say that it shall come out right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you that we lose holiness and we lose the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that you will reign on high and deliver them, that they will be in the nature of Christ. They will have the divine nature of Jesus and that there will be a new creation. For he said, all those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved and they shall be delivered. For today is the day of salvation. So call upon the name of Jesus and he shall help you. We thank you for what we ask for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. For he said, if we ask Um, we shall be given. If we seek, we shall find. If we knock, it shall be open. If your natural fathers know how to give you good gifts and they are evil, how much more will your heavenly father will give you the baptism of the Holy Spirit? So we give you glory, honor, praise, and worship. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you for watching. Make sure that you like, comment, share, and subscribe to the Blessing Report and make sure that you join our Bible study by clicking the link below. And also, we're just trying to make people pray fast, read their Bible, and know what the Bible says about 
anything. So make sure that you comment your hardest questions that are pertaining to your life in the description box below and submit your questions in the form below. And it may be our next video. Thanks for watching.